tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. Hello, everyone. I'm a high school freshman and the guitarist in the band WJM. I'm also the 38th generation to descend from a kin community in a small farm. I'm going to tell you a story of how our culture transformed when we all started leaving our small family tribes to join the global village. It's a story of how we got to now. Once upon a time, we all lived in tightly knit tribes of extended relatives. There was mom and dad, many siblings, and even cousins, aunts, and uncles. We took care of each other according to the degree of relatedness, something biologists call Hamilton's rule. We were fed, informed, and governed by those who had our best interests at heart. When humans began harnessing energy, breathtaking progress ensued. However, the same technologies that have put so much value at our fingertips have also increased our social entropy. Stable, strong bonds in small tribes have been replaced with weaker transactional interactions in the modern world. On one hand, our prehistoric mind longs for the way things used to be. On the other hand, it is truly wonderful to be a part of today's incredible global village. Since the biologic evolution of our social brains can't keep pace with cultural evolution, we have been trying to build institutions to help us adapt. To some extent, these institutions have served us quite well. However, things still don't feel quite right sometimes. We now rely much more on strangers who are not biologically aligned with us. And based on Hamilton's rule, these strangers have an incentive to self-deal and to put their own interests ahead of ours. Yet, our brains were wired by evolution for tribal times, so we underestimate the risk posed by strangers. In essence, family values didn't scale well as we globalized. This shift from high alignment social systems to low alignment ones has corroded our institutions. When those entrusted to serve us don't have skin in the game, unfortunate things can happen. A boardroom breaches its fiduciary duty, a doctor chooses the most profitable procedure, a politician betrays public trust in favor of special interests. Fake news, fake foods, and fake politicians are all, are all catalyzed by the same underlying phenomenon of low alignment. Heroes we admired used to be our uncles and aunts. And now we admire celebrities and athletes who maximize profit by encouraging us to buy more sneakers. Such transactional dynamics have transformed virtually every type of human relationship right down to the Tinder culture. Furthermore, when malalignment is combined with competition, a race to the bottom ensues. If we force one media company to use less clickbait, another company will use more to steal market share. If we force one food company to use less sugar, another food company will use more to fill the void. In a way, high fructose corn syrup and the Kardashians are really the same phenomenon. The inevitable outcome of a race to the bottom when malalignment meets capitalism. As for government, what started as a system of checks and balances has turned into competing checks written to the account balances of politicians. Simply put, the time has come for a systemic reformation to create new institutions with inclusive stakeholding to restore goal congruence. History has taught us that not solving fundamental alignment problems leads to derivative issues. For example, misalignment between labor and capital triggered divergence of political philosophies, social upheavals, and wars. Against this backdrop, the effective use of stock options for all employees to align interests of labor and capital was a stunning innovation. It helped make the Silicon Valley the entrepreneurial juggernaut we know and love today. On the other hand, 
Silicon Valley companies too often don't serve their customers' long-term interests nearly as well as they serve the interests of their shareholders. Clickbaiting to maximize advertising revenue reflects a company over customer philosophy. Think about how media companies profited from AI-driven political polarization using technology algorithms to hijack our bio algorithms. Imagine instead companies being incentivized to balance the long-term success of their customers as well as their shareholders. Blockchain and discount tokens that blur the line between shareholder and consumer are examples of inclusive stakeholding. This is the closest proxy to the tribal alignment of our prehistoric heritage. More generally, is aligning the interests of capital, labor, and consumers the next evolution of the social contract? Can we tie the success of teachers to that of their students? Can we tie the success? success of health insurance, food, and media companies to that of their consumers? Can we tie the success of elected officials to that of their constituents? Can we find ways to include the environment, future generations, and others without a voice as stakeholders? Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change things, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. All of us have a generational opportunity to reimagine and redesign today's institutions to lead our culture into a better future. We will all be aligned with the success of your ideas. Whereas malalignment with competition is a race to the bottom, alignment with competition is a race to the top. If we succeed, our transformative journey to the connected global village will be complete. Let's write the story of where we go from now. Thank you.